Man, this is awesome. Guys, welcome to another version of uh, Local Band Smoke. I have a special guest today. I've been a big fan of these guys for such a long time. I have Reside in the building. How are you, fellas? What's going Good. on? What's going on? Man, this, this is, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a this lot of fun. This is going to be great. So uh, just to let everybody know, uh, they were messaging me about 30 minutes ago, and they were like, are you ready, bro? Are you ready? What's going on? What's, wh what? <laughs> what? What's the deal? And I was like, uh, we're, we're doing it tomorrow. And, and then it's uh, probably my fault. I'm a super stoner, so it's probably my fault. <laughs> but uh, we're here. We made it all work. For those, of you, for those of you guys that don't know, you can follow them at at Reside Band. They're out of Australia. They're basically like an emo alternative rock band. But that's kind of not what's going on on no. the, the Relit EP. No, we we are lit. We re, we we yeah, relit. We we were lit once. And then let's we let's, let's let's talk about that. Again. So I I jammed it hard yesterday and today, mm -hmm. and um I've already been a huge fan of the 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 beach video that you guys had. That's actually one of my sons. Uh, he's only four, and that's one of his yeah, favorite yeah, songs. Kids? Yeah, I have one you kid. So young. I have one kid. His name's Lyric. Oh, that's oh so sick. Awesome. Yeah, his name's Lyric. Uh, so we're diehard music fans, but he loves that song. But what? How did the relit EP like come about? uh so I, I guess it came about it's a series of events i'd say because um you know this is with the nature of how the world is at the moment i don't want to dwell on that too much but i think that that plays a, a huge part in the way that we you know go to see live music or at least how i perceived coming back to live music after you know maybe going into a lockdown or isolation yeah, yeah. or whatever i remember we had this one specific gig like you and i had been hanging out a lot in the melbourne lockdown mm -hmm. because we were allowed like I, I lived alone and it was just <laughs> basically it was me alone in a fucking single room apartment but we were allowed one person to be like our lockdown buddy mm. so i was like yeah Liam will be my buddy and we just been like hanging out and you know we started reprising some of our songs and then we had this gig coming up and it was like because the audio it was reduced capacity it was kind of a stripped back gig and yeah i, I guess we just i thought that um coming back to shows that would be more like seated and like more yeah you think you way. think people would rush in be like i need live music yeah, yeah exactly so i didn't i didn't want to um i wasn't sure how light, uh, heavy music would translate uh to like a seated crowd um so i I thought I thought maybe we should uh, like you know try and do some rearrangements of some of our songs uh, that would fit something that was a bit more theatrical, something that was a bit more like you could just watch and enjoy it rather than having to like mosh to it, you know, or like yeah, you know, exactly like try to keep it like you know socially distanced and responsible in that sort of sense. Um, and then about eight to twelve months into my synthesizer binge as well. Yeah, like exactly. We so also just happened, like I said, it's a series of events, so we also just really like happened to get really into synthesizers and, and stuff so um we wanted to reflect that a bit into in our music and yeah i don't know it it, it just kind of snowballed it's it started off as a bunch of just rearrangements that we were just going to play it's live. so like, good it's yeah, so thank, good like I, thank you. after jamming it twice the the track that really stands out to me is the second half of the intro track which is solace oh, yeah. the shadow yeah, remix yeah, yeah, yeah. that one like the, okay so first of all can we can we Guinness book uh, Guinness Book of World Records the most vocal stutters in history in one song, <laughs> like for real, yeah. the most yeah. ever in one song. But that but that's what makes it cool. Like it's so such a crazy outro. But like that song in general is just like the rest. I would say like the rest of the EP after jamming it is like a very poppy kind of mm. vibe, even though yeah. it's kind of like a gloomy material as far as lyrically yeah. based. Yeah, um, definitely. It's, 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 it's light and dark. It's, you know, um, I think we definitely wanted to, uh, I think, I think when we were creating the, the, the EP, we wanted to at least, uh, make it really good for the setting in which I know you would enjoy it, BG. I, you know, I, I, I know I we, would. We, yeah, we, we definitely <laughs> wanted to make this one for the stone. There was a certain mindset oh, yeah. that we wanted to capture. You just went out and say it. I was going yeah. to more heavy handed fucking <laughs> euphemisms, but. So the, uh, yeah. No, you go, you go, you can see. I was just going to say, it was just like another, you know, another way of uh, vehicle for us to experiment. I don't think we've ever had like vocal stutters in our music. And I thought, you know, let's, 
let's chuck, chuck that in there. I was yeah. also hell about the idea because earlier that year, the Enter Shikari album, um, Nothing Is True and Everything mm. Is Possible had come out. And that featured like just a couple of reprises of not even whole songs, but like sections from their older stuff. Yeah. But it was a really, really great new sound as well. And then so when it was kind of like, oh, let's take a newer sound that we're playing with and like, you know, let's just have some fun reprising some songs. Mm. I was like, fuck, yes. Yeah, yeah it's, it came out great. It came out great. Okay, I got, I got, a, I got a whole list of questions for you guys just ranging from all kinds of topics so we're gonna get cool. everywhere cool, cool, cool. um so whereabouts exactly in australia are you born and raised we're both both melbourne both eastern suburbs yeah. boys yeah east, east side of melbourne east side. Uh, east, have yeah. you have you ever left australia like to visit any other countries any other uh been the states anywhere I haven't been to the States. It's, it's, it's been a dream of mine to go visit the States. Um, there are only two countries that I, well, actually there's been a few countries I've visited overseas. Um, the first one was, uh, I was in, I've been to Scotland for, um, a few weeks, awesome. um, Edinburgh and Glasgow specifically. And then we visited a few other areas, but then, uh, more recently, uh, my dad and I actually, we went, uh, on a little like European tour, uh, just over for a few countries and we went to, uh, Amsterdam. We went to uh, a, a place in uh, Germany, which I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but it's called Gelsenkirchen. <laughs> okay. And, like... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we went to uh, Brussels, which is in Belgium. Uh, that's uh, those are the only places overseas that I visited, but otherwise, been all around uh, all around Australia. Okay. What about you? Um... No, no, I've never left. The never country. left the country. I look. I mean, I prefer you live in Australia. I kind of live in the moment, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, I can dig it. I can totally yeah. dig it. That's what, cool. Uh, when are you coming over to Australia? Man, there's so many bands that want that. I know. Sooner than later, or hopefully sooner than later, for real. Um, you know how much free accommodation you'd have in Australia? Just like <laughs> how many people would want to put you up over here? And I, I didn't. <laughs> I don't know that, but that I'm honored that. There's even people that are willing. There's to a do lot. That. I can I can promise you. There's a lot. That's cool. Uh, I'm gonna dive forward just on a on a question out of nowhere. Yeah. So I kind of discovered you, Liam, obviously through Wind Waker. Yep. Um, can we talk about Wind Waker? Maybe because I don't really know the story of why you left and yeah, what sure. what started reside from that. Um, in my opinion, like having heard the Sitch, which I think was one of the last songs that you kind of did with them, you can yeah. kind of hear the the sound changing in wind waker and i feel like hmm. that was probably a little bit of your doing on that but let's totally. talk about that let's talk about that sure so um i've known the wind waker guys for quite some time now i um i used to play in their in their band oh i don't know it might have been like seven or eight years ago now um when they were when they first first ever moved down to melbourne it was one of the first shows i saw um of theirs and i just happened to be really into that music at the time i wasn't playing in any bands i was uh doing a lot more electronic and hip-hop stuff around that time just on my own and i think i said to my girlfriend at the time i was like man i wish i could play guitar in a band like that and i'd, I'd met uh will and uh chris who um uh, singer and the drummer of wind waker and uh yeah i, I was just chatting to them and a couple days later their guitarist had left and they had asked me to audition right after the show that you saw. Yeah, exactly. Wow. It was just like, yeah, it was just, it happened. It just meant to be. Um, and I had, and little trivia there, um, Will Eggleton who plays in, uh, reside actually was in wind waker as well. He was the one that came up with the name wind waker. Ah. Um, when they first, first formed there. So they all come from this uh, country town called Wagga Wagga up in uh, New South Wales. Wagga Wagga. Yeah, that's it. Okay. It sounds like some made-up word, but I promise you that's the town. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> all words are made up. It's yeah, all right. That's right. Um, so, yeah, and then years passed. I, um, both uh, Will and I had left, but I was still sort of in their peripheral. I'd sort of helped them out with some of the electronic components of their music. And then um, they they were kind of going through guitarists. The chemistry just wasn't working. And then so they asked me to fill in for a little while. Um, me with uh, the other guitarist, Jesse Cross. Um, both of us were filling in for Wind Waker. And so at that time they were kind of only acting as like officially a three piece band. And then, uh, after that, uh, it sort of got, it, it was coming time for us to write and record, uh, the, the empire record. So we did, we'd done new infinite. We're helping them write that. And then, um, empire was, uh, being written and yeah, I, I guess I had a, a pretty heavy involvement with the songwriting in that, on that record. And I'm very proud of that record. 
um, and what it's it's done for both myself and and the guys in that band um, in terms of our trajectory. But um, I guess I'd started Reside during that period or a couple of years prior to that. Um, and, and, and really so quick, also, it seemed it seemed like at one point when I was doing my deep dive that there was actually mm-hmm. a second vocalist for you guys. Or something like there. I, I stumbled on a song and it looked like somebody else was singing. The... Oh yeah, I think Sal. Sal like an old, was old, old one. Like yeah, it. yeah. At the first on our first EP, Sal, um, our bass player, sang on a couple of the songs. Yeah. Okay, originally... so what? Yeah. So when was the transition of you going full time as opposed mm. to like doing the trade off? I don't know. I think that maybe just came out of during the. It was during the writing period of the light that you saw. Yeah. That. So our our last sort of like official EP, I don't know, the light that you saw, which is probably what what you discovered us from. Um, that was um uh, that came from, came around the time of writing that. It was like that was a very personal record for me, and I think just naturally it slipped into something that I I don't know. I felt like I I, I wanted to to be on full time and. Um, at that time i'd also given away playing guitar um so i was we were playing as a four piece i was playing guitar and singing and i found that i just could sing a lot better and a lot in a lot more control uh, yeah you know without the guitar without the distractions. so that's what, yeah because you, co- you do all the concentrate and you got to concentrate all the chords exactly and... i can't play it's, guitar so i mean i just my, my brain can't handle that two, those yeah, two yeah. different functions your smooth creaseless brain that's it <laughs> <laughs> i need to build them ridges <laughs> Yo, so you guys are just coming off a, a mini tour right now, right? Yeah, we just did a run of shows. It was oh, a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun. So you can see fun. him smiling. He's it was he's so much fun. he's great. Talk about just a just a badass memory of of the the mini tour that just happened. Like something something maybe not show related, but so maybe something that a fan did or just anything. Uh, I I got one show related. Okay, that's cool. Uh, at our so at our first on the interstate shows mm-hmm. of the run. Uh, we were in Brisbane, and uh, yeah, I remember like the show was just running hell ahead of schedule. Like we uh, had twenty minutes extra, and we were like, "Shit, well, we don't want to start too early and have, you know, uh, people that just wanted to rock up for the headline band kind of miss out on half the show." But we also don't want to keep people waiting an obscenely long amount mm. of time. And so the guys, uh, usually I just kind of do this like synthy textured walk on for the guys, yeah. and it's a bit of fun. But they were like, are you able to extend that? And I kind of just had to think on the fly and think, what can I improv? And I realized there's a couple of chord progressions that kind of share the same, uh, you know, the same key. So I could kind of blend some of those and blend the leads together. And a little medley. Nice, yeah, make a nice medley, but also just mostly just a big wall of textures. And Hell yeah. I was I was in quite a mindset, let me tell you. <laughs> I was somewhere <laughs> else here. For sure. And it, uh, I was a bit anxious stepping up and I was like, uh, you know, shit, I don't want to fuck this up. But then as soon as I hit that first key, every anxiety melted away and I just got lost in like yeah, in how it sounded. It and I had so much fun and it was just, and then everyone got up on stage and it ended up being like the hardest we vibed on stage. Too. Yeah. I was a near perfect show. That yeah. Brisbane show. So much fun. Yeah. That's fun. awesome. Those are yeah. the fun ones. Hell yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Uh, so you're, uh, you guys can collab with any living artists, le- living or dead. Who would it be? It, oh, damn. Any artist, uh, living or dead? Damn, I don't. Have you huge got, question. Huge question. All right. Well, you can kind of break it down to a few categories. Yeah, yeah, I exactly. I, th- I think if if there was like a, a dead artist that I would personally like, I'd love to. I'd love to work with like Jeff Buckley. I think he's one of my all-time. Oh hell yeah! Favorites. Cool. Um, and I, I, I just just for the sheer fact that I would not ever be able to do that, um, because he's not alive, um. Yeah, makes that quite special. Um, but there's there's a lot there's like a lot of hip hop artists I'd love to work with. I think I'd either go just I'll tell off the top of my head, Vangelis who wrote the Blade Runner score. Yep. Or clipping. Yeah, yeah clipping, clipping would be mad. Yeah, what was it? What was the second one? Clipping. Clipping. Flipping? Clipping. Clipping. Like C L I P P I N G. I don't know um, what that is. They're a group of like so David Diggs, who's like he's just some entrepreneur. Like he's just, he's got his finger in every pie. He's like an actor. He's yeah, a, he's one of the main actor. guys in Hamilton the musical. I don't know, but he oh, okay, has okay. Like his, he I has know his... Les Leslie Odom's the other main guy in Hamilton. But I, okay, you're talking the guy that has the must the main 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 guy. 
I th I think so. I haven't seen Hamilton, haven't seen so. Hamilton either. So I haven't seen it either. <laughs> We're all like, uh, a, he plays in this industrial experimental hip hop group called Clipping. Yeah, it's just him and um, two like noise artists. On yeah, scene and... it, okay. it's like it's like noise, but like with like you know like gangster rapping over the top of it. It's fucking. I have amazing. to check that out. I'd never heard of it. That's Please. cool. Yeah, it's good you shit. Go go listen to the song "Check the Lock." That mm. song. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the song. So, uh, you guys are in a non-cannabis friendly country, but yeah. but I'm every now and then, eh, eh. oh yeah, I think I think the vast majority of people probably do it. Yeah, but just on you know, look, like I, okay. I think that there's a federal stance on you know, no, no marijuana. But if you kind of draw out in a cartoon, you stereotypical bogan. It's a dude sitting in high vis on a lawn chair with a Gatorade bug and a VB. So. <laughs> For sure. So I think it's also part of the culture to an extent. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. I'm a river right now for like you. It's kind of it's kind of an inevitability that it would uh get like legalized at some point. It's just they're just pushing back the clock. But the thing is they could also tax so much fucking money off it. Yeah, that's what things, so. that's what most of the states, like individual states over here are doing. They're just they're just taxing the hell out of it, but at least you don't have to worry now. Like you don't have to, yeah. you know, like look around like somebody looking at me when i'm smoking a joint or whatever the case may be exactly it was a bit of um <laughs> culture shock when uh when i visited amsterdam i mentioned earlier for that very reason i think um you know it's it's okay to do it in public i think there's still some like i don't know what it's like over in the states but i think like the one thing i learned was there was there was still some social etiquette you know like you don't you don't just do it like at a restaurant or something like right, that. Right, right. You know, <laughs> no, they, yeah. they still tell you to kind of like, yeah, that's oh, round. You know, a couple meters down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah, it it was it was just interesting to to see a world or a culture that you know didn't uh, yeah, I guess I guess didn't what's what is the word I'm looking for? Like <laughs> control it. Yeah, or just, it yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. It wasn't against the law. Yeah, it'll it'll be done sooner or later. Mm. Um, okay, so whenever I show your guys' music to people, the number one band I, I get as far as like a comparison mm -hmm. is Movements. Yeah. Are you tired of that or do you embrace that compliment? I know I can't be the only one. Uh, you're definitely not the only one. Um, and I think Movements are a terrific band and uh, I think Patrick Miranda is a, is a great vocalist and songwriter. Um, I, I think they definitely had a, an influence on us. Um, at a certain point in time, and I think they, they still do. Um, I, th I think they're they're a great band. Um, I think I think we just have with with this Relight EP and, and moving forward with which is what we want to expand what we are known for, uh, um, rather than just being sort of like the one trick pony that you know writes some melodic you know post punk music. It's 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 far greater now. It's far more broad. Um, which I find more, uh, uh, very exciting, but I, I think that the the content probably will still remain similar. You know, it's 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 still going to be you know punk and emo music. I mean, I, I to core. be honest with you, I think uh, movements album they dropped recently was actually my favorite album of last year. So I think wow. that's one of the reasons I gravitate towards your guys' music a lot. Yeah. Um, I th I think it was heavily underrated. That's for sure. I think yeah. it was a heavily underrated album. I love Feel Something. I think that's mm -hmm. one of like a, 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 a near perfect album, and I think a lot of people would agree. Um, but uh, no good left to give is is very incredible. I love that second half. That yeah. Second half of that album, just from like just straight through, is really great. It's almost um, there's pretty much no skips on it. Yeah. But um, what was your favorite song off that album? Just out of curiosity. Uh, it's, what is it? Twelve weeks? Is that what it's called? Ooh, Twelve weeks choice. is really good. I like Seneca. Yeah, Seneca is really good. In my blood, the first one is cool. It has some cool like melody harmonies on it. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. I wanna I wanna hit the share screen button real quick, okay, with, with you guys. And Oop. let's have a page. So now you can see you can see uh, what's on my screen, me. right? Look yeah, I can. I can. So I want to play this lightly in the background. All right. But let's talk about the video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got oh, yeah. we got crazy makeup going on. We got we got awesome five year old toys. My son was all over it. What inspired the video? We wanted to have fun. Yeah, I, I think we just wanted a very low stakes, just vibey video that felt like the music that was being played. And 
Um, it came together very easily. I mean, like a lot of our videos, though, it was it was made by ourselves in in collaboration with uh, Liam Davidson, Lord Media, who is essentially like a sixth member of of the band. Um, yeah. You know, he's he's pretty much done most of our videos um, and works very directly with us. Um, and yeah, I, I guess the the makeup just comes from a lot of my influences. I, I love I love a lot of. Um, both male and female uh, figures that you know that wear very theatrical makeup, and I think the sunnies came more from you. From you, uh, the sunnies directly. came right out of my personal collection. Yeah. I love, I love the uh, what are these daisies? The daisy glasses or yeah. sunflower <laughs> they glasses? Look like the, they look like they'd be cool to wear, but the, it just makes everything look toxic in the world. Yeah, Carly so like calls them piss glasses because it's all yellow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and especially at the beach, it just wasn't what he wanted. But God bless him for just soldiering through. Yeah, it has such a fun vibe. But why did why did you specifically pick out the Lionel Richie shirt? Which I noticed at the end, you dropped the hello right at the yeah. end. <laughs> I see it all, man. I see it all. So you specifically did that. But why why that shirt? Um, to tell you the truth. I uh, I think I paid a visit to H&M like either that day or the day before and I was like I need some new threads for this video and I saw that shirt and I thought it was way too funny not to wear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I that... you, you pulled it out on the day and you're like, now I've got some other stuff and if you don't, you know, if we, you think this is a dumb idea to wear this. Hello. And I was like, no <laughs> way, dude. Is it me you're looking for? Yeah. I love that jam. Yeah. We, we originally wanted to open the video with that hello as well. Yeah, so actually the opening shot, we, we'd done a, a few different takes of it and the one that we landed on was more side on with me. But the, uh, yeah, originally I had like the cardigan kind of like down a little bit on my shoulders and you could kind of see the hello and that was like going to be the first shot but i think the reveal at the end is a lot there's a lot yeah it's it's way cooler seen at the end i was like oh shit because i'm a big lionel fan so i was like i I see what he's doing there i see who he went for that's what's up okay so i want to jam a little bit of an older track but this is the first track i ever heard from you guys no way uh the the light that i found and i still play it all the time so what what inspired what inspired this video uh, oh. I don't know what, 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 I can't even remember. It's I a very, it's a very like simple, that, yeah. serious video, but then, but then you're kind of like goofy at some parts, but then, yeah. but it's like, it's all, it all matters what's going on. I think, I think a lot of it is to do with like, um, it's, it's to do with change and, and, and time passing, you know, um, how you can change as a person over time. And so that's when these like different um, iterations of me kind of come out that do these different personalities but I think they're more supposed to be symbols of you know where like this is like very uh, like a, a like a younger Liam so to speak and then you know as the video goes on there's different uh, outfit changes and you know a different person kind of comes out um, you know the different different behavior um, sort of pops out as time goes on yeah it's cool um, you walk off and then you come back and you're like a little more goofy yeah. crazy right now. I think a lot of people also like who know me personally uh, and then come to see us live notice like a very different change. Like um, I'm, I'm definitely not as out there like this, um, you know, in, in, as a, in a one-on-one context or off stage, but then when I'm performing it's like a different person. I think that that kind of gets reflected a bit in this video. Hell yeah, I can tell you that for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, never mind, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to interrupt. The way we usually like do an uh, approach a video as well as we try and find like the simplest way to explore a couple of really cool concepts so we don't overwork ourselves, but then it is important to make every single thing significant, <laughs> otherwise it's just a waste. You know? Yeah, that's right. Cool. It is a little hard to hear your answer. Uh, oh, on sorry, that. man. I'll, I'll no, 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 uh, way better, way better, way better. Sorry, dude. Can you repeat that one more time? Oh, I was just going to say, the way that we usually try to approach a video is that uh, we like find a couple of cool visual concepts that we want to explore and we don't try not to overwork ourselves, but we make it look as good as we can, like aesthetically, and then just, uh, yeah, like you said, make everything matter because otherwise it's just a waste of a video, you know, what's going on isn't sort of significant. Yeah, well, it's, it's a cool, simple concept and it works, so I dig it. Thank you. I got a couple awesome. more for you. Um, all right, so you can only take one album ever to an island. So this normally when I ask people this, it, it's an album. I mean, you can pick whatever you want, but it's an album that kind of like 
made them who they are as a musician is kind of what I'm looking okay. for. Mm. See, I frequently think about like a list of five Desert Island albums that I take, but yeah. I can't I'm narrowing it down to one. Yeah. The airport's like, no, you cannot take these four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the airport when I'm going to this barren island. Yeah, it seems the agents are just like, no, only one. You're over the limit. Okay. Um, I, I feel like Carnival Sound Awake has got to be one of them. I feel like that's probably my answer as well. Yeah. yeah. What is it? What is Car it again? Carnival, so Carnival Sound Awake. I don't know if you've ever heard of Carnival. They're Australian band from Perth, um, and they're kind. I think they're probably regarded as like Australia's Tool. I don't. Um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, like as in Tool the band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Make that comparison a lot, but um, I guess a. Uh, but I, I don't know. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I felt. I'm. Uh, no, Sound awake. Sound, all right, right. Sound awake. Yeah, like, that's it. There's a lot of other albums that this one has shaped me maybe not in a deep deep emotional way mm. but like it changed my perception of music music yeah and it's a really really fucking good album i never get sick of listening to it the other one i'd say was my first ever album purchase uh as a kid what would be the self-titled blink 182 album oh yeah. that's a really good one yeah oh yeah, yeah. 2003 one so now we're playing uh fallen mm-hmm which is another one of my okay. favorites. Um, it's it's almost like we had the white concept video, and then you got you went for like the complete opposite and included the band. Yeah, that's ex that's exactly it, man. Um, <laughs> I, I, we never had a we've never had a black and white video before, and that was something that I really wanted to capture, um, like aesthetically. Uh, there was like a few references that I wanted to like, like a few video references, like. Um, I think there was a police video every time, uh, every breath you take. Yeah, yeah. It was like that, mm -hmm. like that look, um, and I, w I wanted to kind of capture that, uh, just because it felt like this. What this song felt like a follow up to our our EP, and it felt like it it, it, it belonged, but also like was kind of like the opposite in a lot of ways. Um, so, yeah, I, I wanted to have like. We, there was like a few different like effects that we wanted to try and experiment with, and I think that's what we what we achieved with this video. You know, like there was a lot of stuttering and echoing and video feedback. Yeah, again, um, it was just a case of like there was some. We were like, all right, what do we want to play with? And we mm. kind of found a, cool, a few cool like reference videos, and we were like, this seems like it'll be fun. Mm. Funnily enough, Blade Runner was another reference that we had for this yeah. for this video. Well, yeah, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, the holographic scene. Oh yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. God, that's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, this one's actually one of my favorite hooks that you guys have, too, in your songs. Oh, man, thank you. Okay, so I'm about out of questions, but I thought it'd be fun if we ended on how that crazy, crazy vocal stutter and we just talk oh, about yeah. and we talk about how that came about. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to play it first with people that don't that don't know what's going on. Let's play it. Let's play the end of it real quick. <laughs> Like right, it's like right around this area. But it's it's so funny, but fun and like awesome. And then we'll talk about how that came about. <laughs> it's so tight. The producer's like, I got it! You guys were like, what the hell? It's amazing. Let's keep it. Thank you. That was, that was, um, that was a bit of a late addition to that remix. Cause, uh, so this, this this was all in, you know, we, we did all this ourselves. This this all, Like all our music, we've done it all. You know, It's all self-recorded? Yeah, I, I, yeah. Re I record and produce all, the, all of our music. You do all the so. mastering and everything? Yeah, everything. Dude, that fucking... Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> well done. Hey, well done. You, you the That's well done. Thank you. Um, yeah, I Damn, think that came son. from a few different influences, but it was a, it was a late um, addition to the track. Originally, it didn't have that, and I was like, we need we need something cool here for the end. And one of my biggest influences in music is um, an artist, Childish Gambino. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and his last record had so many vocal splices and like weird experimental like stuff going on with like vocals uh, over like long extended sections. And I was like, I want to do something like that. 
Um, and I'm a metalcore dweeb, so I just love a good vocal stutter yeah. any day of the week. <laughs> love a bit of glitch. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that was it was partly to do with that, but also just like it was something rather than just having you know the vocal track played under played over the top of like a new instrumental. I thought it could be it could add a new a nice new dimension. It's such yeah. a fun part to the ending of the first song. And then you, you're you like, I don't know what is coming next. And then the complete opposite comes next. It's just the yeah. most poppy, fun record. And you're like, whoa, now I got to hear track three yeah. because it's the complete opposite of track one and track two. So it's very smartly thought about how the track order is. Yeah. Um, not a not a one trick party. We, we, we'll, we'll do We'll do lots of things, I think. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I look forward to it, guys. Guys, this is this is a lot of fun. I apologize about the mix up, but we, we pulled right. it together. We made it work. Uh, yeah. We had a blast doing it too. <laughs> I did at least. I hopefully you did. We but, should definitely do this yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, let's please, please. And I I will as soon as I can, I will take up on your offer and come to Australia, I promise. Yeah. So I'll I'll bring the whole family. I, I don't know when it's gonna be dual, but I but it's it's oh. literally on my it's like number two or one on my bucket list. So yes. Fuck yeah. Awesome. So. We'll be looking forward to it. We'll um and when we when we have an album, we'll definitely uh we'll definitely send it to you a bit early on so we can get your thoughts. Excellent. I, I look forward to that too, and I'll, awesome. I'll keep the secret safe. I won't let anybody hear it Woo! until you give me the words. Thank you. Guys, if, if you if you get a chance, please go to uh, at Reside Band. Give them some support. Like them. Follow them. All their social medias. Whatever you can do. If you're already in Australia, you probably already know who they are. But please, please support them in addition to your already continuous support. That'd be awesome. I had a blast doing this, guys. Tell Ophelia Simmons I said, what's up? <laughs> I will definitely let her know. <laughs> Cheers. I had a blast, guys. Enjoy the rest Thank of your you day. Thank you so much, Fiji. You too. Have a great, great night. Man. Hell yeah. See ya. Cheers.